Hi there wonderful Astro person, welcome to my Astro Forum channel and thanks for tuning in. In this video I'll be discussing various astrophotography setups I've used over the years to photograph the night sky as well as the costs involved. So lots of folks mention that astrophotography as a hobby can be a real money pit and I'm afraid I'm going to confirm that in this video. However, I do want to show you how I've built up my astrophotography gear over the years without spending all of my money at once. So in this video, I will take you along and I will show you six different setups I've used over the years to photograph the night sky from a simple DSLR camera on a tripod to an advanced setup with a dedicated telescope, mount and astrophotography camera. I will be discussing the pros and cons for each of the setups as well as the costs involved. And I hope this video is particularly useful for those of you who are starting this wonderful astrophotography hobby and you're wondering what kind of gear you'll need to photograph the night sky. So one of the easiest ways to get into astrophotography is with a DSLR camera you probably already own. So me personally I started my astrophotography journey in 2016 with an old Canon 1200D consumer level camera, you can see it here, also called the Rebel T5 in the USA. And that camera came with the stock 18 to 55 millimeter EFS lens. Now some of the main advantages about using a DSLR camera for astrophotography are that they are multifunctional. So you can use them for daytime as well as nighttime photography. They're also pretty affordable, so most consumer level cameras only cost a couple of hundred euros or dollars. They're also pretty familiar, so most people already know how to take pictures with a DSLR. And of course they're pretty portable, so DSLR cameras are easy to take with you on, so on some nice holiday or camping trips, where you can take pictures of the night sky from some awesome dark sky locations. Now if you want to take your first steps into astrophotography using a DSLR camera, you should also get a sturdy tripod to prevent <laughs> any kind of vibrations while taking long exposure pictures of the night sky. In addition, it also helps to buy this simple intervalometer. Uh, it enables you to continuously shoot the night sky without the need to touch the shutter on your camera. Uh, and this prevents, of course, vibrations. If you're just starting out, I really recommend buying a simple consumer level DSLR camera that doesn't break the bank. So at the time of this video, there are some very decent consumer level cameras out there, uh, like for instance the Canon Rebel T7, also called the Canon 2000D, that's basically the successor of this one. Uh, it also comes with a stock 18-55mm EFS lens, a, a tripod and an intervalometer for about $500 or euros. So my first dedicated astrophotography gear consisted of a telescope and a computerized astrophotography mount. Now my first telescope was this telescope service 8480mm apochromatic refractive telescope and my first mount was the Celestron Advanced VX mount uh, you can see over here, which cost me altogether about $2,000 or euros. So that's about $1,000 for the telescope and $1,000 for the mount. Now, I kept using my consumer level Canon DSLR camera, which you can easily attach to the telescope, as you can see, with the so-called T2 ring, which is available for only $15 or euros. So let me get into the main advantages of using a telescope mount and a telescope instead of just using a DSLR camera. So a good quality computerized equatorial telescope mount like this Celestron Advanced VX mount has a couple of advantages. Now, first of all, it can automatically find objects in the night sky with a computerized go-to system. And it can also automatically track the path of the objects you want to photograph in the night sky as it compensates for the Earth's rotation. So this mount will keep the object you want to photograph centered in the field of view of your camera so you can take longer exposure pictures. 
Now there are also a couple of advantages in buying a high quality refractor telescope like this telescope service 8480 photo line refractor over using a regular camera lens with your DSLR camera. So this telescope has a focal length of 480 millimeters and that really magnifies some deep sky objects and that's beyond most zoom lenses you can find for your DSLR camera. Uh, also the 80 millimeter aperture and the high quality apochromatic FPL 53 lenses they provide a well color corrected picture of objects in the night sky now often better than most camera lenses can provide. This telescope is only 375 millimeters long and it weighs only about 3 kilograms or 7 pounds. So it's really easy to uh, store this telescope in your house and to set up this telescope. Now, the telescope doesn't require any maintenance beyond regular cleaning so that's pretty awesome as well. So with the setup we've just discussed, you definitely will be able to take up to about 60 second exposures of objects in deep space. Now, longer exposure times still result in blurry pictures as most equatorial mounts like the Celestron Advanced VX here, they do have some error in tracking objects in the night sky and they need some help. Now to achieve even longer exposures, you'll need an extra guide scope and a guide camera. So in my case, I bought this Orion 50mm mini guide scope and the ZWO ASI 120 color guide camera, which altogether costs an extra 250 euros or dollars. Yeah, beyond of course the, the gear I already showed you. Now, auto guiding basically involves tracking a star with an additional guide camera and a guide scope, as you can see here, and you can attach that guide camera and guide scope to your telescope. Now, the guide camera will track the position of a star that is close to the object you want to photograph. And every time the star moves its position, the guide camera can send a signal to your mount to correct its position. And with the help of auto guiding, it is really possible to take these multi-minute photos and that enables you to catch even the dimmest light in deep space. So at some point in time, you probably want to replace your regular DSLR camera with a dedicated cooled astrophotography camera. Now one major downside about using DSLR cameras for astrophotography is that the sensor cannot be cooled. So during astrophotography sessions, your camera tends to heat up and that leads to noise in your long exposure pictures. Now with a dedicated cooled astrophotography camera, you can cool the sensor of your camera down to about minus 45 degrees Celsius below ambient temperatures. And this really, really helps to keep the noise down, resulting in much higher quality pictures. Now in my case I bought this older ZWO ASI 178 uh, cool color camera but that camera is no longer available it got, it got replaced by a high quality camera that is uh, the ASI 183 uh, color camera and it costs about $800 or 999 euros. So as the next step in my astrophotography hobby, I decided to buy a dedicated cooled mono astrophotography camera, including a dedicated electronic filter wheel and some filters. Now in my case, I decided to buy the popular ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera with an eight position electronic filter wheel as you can see here and in this filter wheel I have uh, several broadband filters so red green and blue broadband filters from ZWO actually and some 7 nanometers H alpha sulfur and oxygen narrowband filters now one question you probably have when just starting out is why would someone buy a mono camera for their astrophotography hobby now there are a couple of advantages uh, with a mono uh, camera and with some filters, you have much more control over what part of the light spectrum you want to capture. Now, for example, when using a red filter in combination with a mono camera, you'll be able to collect light uh, in the red part of the light spectrum while rejecting light that is emitted at different wavelengths. And in addition, you can also engage in what is called narrowband imaging. You can capture light that is emitted in specific wavelengths. And I need an example, I think. So 
For instance, lots of nebulas contain hydrogen gases and those gases, they emit light at very specific wavelengths in the light spectrum. Now by using narrowband filters, you will be able to collect those specific wavelengths of light while rejecting light from all other wavelengths. And this often results in a much higher quality picture um, where the so-called signal to noise ratio is much better as compared to using a regular color camera for astrophotography. Now, one downside of course is that you need more time, much more time actually, to collect the light from particular objects at different wavelengths. In addition, you're adding more complexity to your astrophotography setup and your astrophotography sessions. So you need to integrate the mono camera as you can see here with the filter wheel and your telescope. And you really have to think about the different filters you want to use to, uh, to actually capture different objects in the night sky. So about one year ago, I decided to buy a new telescope and this is my Celestron Edge HD 8 inch telescope. Now, some of the main reasons for me to buy this telescope is that it has a bigger aperture of 203 millimeters as compared to the 18 millimeter uh, refractor. So I can collect uh, more light uh, and take higher resolution pictures of objects in the night sky with this telescope. Also the Edge HD, it has a longer focal length as, as compared to the refractor telescope I own. So it is able to better magnify tinier objects in the night sky, such as tiny galaxies. And I even engage in some planetary imaging with this telescope. As this telescope is somewhat heavier and it also has a longer focal length, I decided to upgrade my mount to a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Now this mount is able to track the objects in the night sky much more precisely as compared to the advanced VX you can see here. Um, and that's really important when trying to take multi-minute photos using a long focal length telescope. Now the EQ6R Pro is also able to carry heavier telescopes. And when we look at that uh, entire rig, so uh, in combination with my ASI 1600 Mono Pro, the filter wheel, the filters, and I even bought an additional 0.7 reducer with this telescope. Now the total setup costs uh, more than $5,000 or euros. So yes, you can see how astrophotography can be a real money pit. And I didn't even talk about automated focusers, rotators, and perhaps even an extra dome in your backyard for your telescope gear. So it's really important to think about a budget. How much are you willing or <laughs> allowed to spend on your astrophotography hobby? And I do want to note that even with a simple DSLR camera and a tripod, you can have as much fun as uh, using the advanced setup I just showed you. So I really hope this video gave you some insights into the costs of astrophotography, as well as the choices I've made to build up my astrophotography gear over the years. Now you can find links to the different setups and gears I presented in this video in the video description below. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like backyard astrophotography in general, you're of course welcome to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time and clear skies.